Hi, I'm Dave Baker. My voice is cracking now because apparently I'm 12. And I'm here with Richard and Wendy Peeney, the creators of ElfQuest. Uh, to start things off, I'd just like to say to you guys that the two comic books that are responsible for me being a writer are Tintin and ElfQuest. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so what's the connection between those two? Uh, I don't know if there is a lot, uh, but for me, they were in the comic section at the library in Arizona, where I'm from. And good I, library. Yeah, it was a really good library. And for me, ElfQuest was this. It wasn't like anything else on on the shelves. Like I, I found it before anything else fantasy. So it really blew my mind with these giant wolves. And I also really liked the way that you depict the human form. Your sense of anatomy is really, really great. Well, I, I knew the rules of anatomy so I could break them when it came to the elves, mm -hmm. you know, because they're very s stretchy yeah. and squashy compared yeah. to normal humans. Yeah, totally. It, it felt like an animated movie almost. Yes. yes. She, she has got the most incredible, uh, uh, mingling of different styles because there's the animation stretch and squash there is the the lightness of um, manga of the Japanese way of, of drawing but then there's also the solidity of, of like a Jack Kirby just mm -hmm. massive and muscular and she puts them together like nobody else can I like to say I'm a child of Tezuka and Kirby do good people to be a child? Yeah, it's uh, if you look at my work, it's kind of a melding of the two, the the intense manga influence and then the the solidity and bulk of Jack. Yeah, and the way you lay out panels and the way you have storytelling elements from both of those people, I think is definitely there. Yeah. Um, I own it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's what you got to do, right? That's what you got to do. So let's talk about ElfQuest, uh, the current book. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, The Final Quest is a story that we've been waiting to get to for over 20 years now. The original treatment for the story was done back in the mid-90s, uh, and uh, it, it, it really startled us to work that story out and realize that it would be coming eventually because it's not, it's not the final quest in the sense that it's the end of Elf Quest, far from it. It is, it is, however, the completion of the hero's journey, a completion of a, of, of a big story arc that began with the first issue of ElfQuest, and we're, we're going to go all the way through that. And we're going to do stuff, and we have been, but we're, we're going to even kick it up a notch, a stuff we've never done before with the characters. And, you know, I think... I think our fans are going to be kept totally off balance by this series for the duration. There are a few critiques out there uh, from people who say, you've been doing this so long, you're just making it up as you go. Oh, well, aren't you? Isn't that what writing is? It's making things up. Well, writing is making things up, yes, but just pulling it out of your butt as you go is not what we're doing because we can point to issues that are 20, 25, 30 years in the past and say, you know that thing that happened last issue? Look over here 30 years ago. Do you see the setup? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's how we say to them, no, we're not just making this up out of whole cloth as we go. We've been planting clues to what's happening in Final Quest right now all through the series for all these years. And so now people can go back. Once, once everything is told in Final Quest, people can go back and go, that's what that was all about. <laughs> so then do you guys have like a master plot? Is there an end date or not date, but an end story that you're working towards or? There is, as Wendy said, this is, this is an arc and all good stories have an arc, a beginning, a middle and an end. The, 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 the mythological classic is the hero's journey. And yes, we have known what this journey is in the broad strokes since the beginning. Yes, yes we have. How, how do you guys uh, remain passionate about something over the course of literally your entire lives almost? How, how do the fans remain passionate? I mean, it, it, it's very much a give and take, you know, we, we put the story out there and we see that people are so invested in these characters, like almost like following a soap opera. And so we stay, we stay passionate because of this, this synergy between us and the, and the readers. Uh, plus, plus the fact that, you know, We'll be in the same room sometimes, and she'll be drawing, and I'll be watching over her shoulder, and she'll say, well, you know, I'm going to do this and that. Maybe the character should say this, or I wonder if there's a different way to say it, and one or the other of us will come, oh, how about if they say this instead of that? And that's fun. It's still fun. 
The other day I painted a rather amazing page for issue 11, which won't be out until what, November? July, August, uh, mid-September. Mid-September. And I called Richard in to come and look at it, and uh, you know, we were like, oh man. And I said, okay, can I put it up on Facebook? And he was like, <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> we're, we're really, really like close fisted, tight fisted about spoilers. Right, right, right. Um, do you guys, do you guys see yourself ever doing anything that's not ElfQuest or is it like... I have, I have you, uh, do, do you know about Mask of the Red Death? No I don't, but I'm about to. <laughs> okay, well you, are you old enough? Yes, I'm old enough. <laughs> I'm um, you know what? Never mind. Yeah, I'm old enough. All right, I'll take that as a compliment. I'm serious because Mask of the Red Death, that, uh, there was a period where Warner Brothers had optioned ElfQuest for a movie from uh, 2008 through 2011. They eventually decided to drop it because their feeling was it was too much like The Hobbit, which means they never read it. Yeah, it's so. nothing like The Hobbit. <laughs> so, but in a sense, it was lucky for us because Warner Brothers told us, while we've got it, please don't do anything with it. So we had to kind of let ElfQuest lie fallow for four years until the option ran out. And during those four years, I did a project that had been on my mind for a long, long time. It couldn't have been more opposite from ElfQuest in every possible way. It's called Mask of the Red Death, and it's based on Edgar Allan Poe's short story, Mask of the Red Death. And it, it, it is a whopping 400-page graphic novel, <laughs> X-rated, adults only. Right, right. Uh, and, and the most wonderful aspect of it all is that not only did I finish the graphic novel, but I also wrote the libretto for a musical based on the graphic novel. And it has been turned into a musical. Our composer is Gregory Neighbors, and he has finished all the songs. And we've done two readings of the musical so far. Well, I know what I'm doing after this interview. <laughs> You're going yes. to go to maskoftherereddeath.com and we'll give you a special link so you can see the sizzle reel. That's awesome. That's super cool. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is serious stuff. Yeah. And 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 we like to say in in somewhat joking but not entirely that that ElfQuest is Wendy's lighter side and mask is the dark side and it, it's a good thing that she got it out because lord knows what she'd be like <laughs> once final quest is done and this stuff was still lurking I'm telling, you, t telling the elf quest story is like reaching very high for the for the highest vibration because these are characters that that come from their highest motivations they try to treat each other as well as they can and you don't see that in comics much these characters are, are not motivated by well there's good and there's evil no that's that's not because they, they are nature spirits they don't have those kinds of values but it's just natural for them to come from a high place and try to treat other living things as well as they can and unfortunately that's not what the world is like so when I'm doing ElfQuest I go to a very kind of high-minded place and there is, you know, if you're a human being, you do have a shadow side. Yeah, yeah. And so there it was, festering, so I got those four years to do Mask of the Red Death. Which is <laughs> entirely about people coming from their lower, darker <laughs> bads. Oh they're they're people behaving badly toward each other. Yes, we have a song in the musical called The Rich Behaving Badly, and it was totally inspired by the Kardashians. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's, I need to see this now. This sounds awesome. This sounds so cool. <laughs> so I guess so you've got the you've got the two sites. You've got ElfQuest.com, and you can find out all you want to know about ElfQuest there. And then you've got Mask of the Red Death, um, with hyphens between the words. Yeah, yeah, all lowercase with hyphens. Okay. Or Mask Musical, one word. Okay. Dot com, and and you can see the uh, the web comic there. Cool. Cool. Well. I think that sounds like a good place to end it. I really appreciate both of you being so avuncular and nice and oh, talking with... That means we're uncle-like. <laughs> like, yes, that's... You meant jocular. No, I meant avuncular, which means nice. <laughs> <laughs> Jocularly avuncular. <laughs> Self-effacing. <laughs> kind. Aww. Definitely. Thank you very much. It was lovely to meet both of you. It was great well, to thank meet you. Thank you for a great interview. <laughs>